Hi, everyone. Uh, we're excited for this session today. It's going to be a good one. We have Saber Sherrard and Johnny Hansen from Bain and Company joining us. And they're going to be talking about how COVID has changed B2B marketing. Lots of changes have happened from this big impact on a lot of businesses. These guys have done a deep study on it and they're going to walk us through that. So they're going to give themselves a more formal introduction here in a second, but appreciate you guys joining. This is going to be great. So I'll let you guys take it from here. Thanks, Spencer. Fantastic. Thank you, Spencer. Um, well, look, we're, we're excited to be with you all today. Uh, you know, Spencer alluded to, we've got a, what we think is a pretty exciting topic uh, and we're looking forward to uh, sharing the findings with you. So first off, uh, I guess by way of introduction, um, my name is Saber Sherrard. I'm, I'm a partner at Bain and Company, uh, leader in our commercial excellence practice, uh, which is sort of Bain speak for, for all things B2B sales and marketing. Uh, and I, uh, I lead Bain's global uh, B2B marketing capability. Uh, and I'm joined by my partner in crime, Johnny Hansen. Uh, Johnny is a fellow partner at Bain, uh, leader in the commercial excellence practice, uh, and also uh, drives a lot of the thinking and work behind our B2B marketing capability. Uh, and together, you know, Johnny and I spend all of our time uh, working with B2B marketing companies uh, to help harness their growth uh, via both sales and marketing. So uh, excited to be here. Um, can we just, just real quickly, uh, you know, we at Bain, we spend a lot of our time and energy uh, sharing our best practices and developing IP and uh, things very much like this. You know, for today, uh, we're only gonna cover a small portion of, of the thought leadership that our, our practice has and, and, and is focused on recently, um, and particularly as it relates to uh, uh, world-class B2B marketing. Um, here's a quick snapshot or subset of what is available at, at uh, Bain.com. Um, and by all means, if there's you know other topics or any of this that is uh, of interest to you, feel free to uh, to reach out to uh, Johnny or I. We'll give our contact information later today. But let's focus about uh, today. Um, so for today, we're excited to share uh, what is frankly some pretty hot off the press, <laughs> hot off the presses IP uh, that we recently completed in partnership with Twitter. Um, for those that joined last year, uh, we shared our first round of results. Uh, from some longitudinal uh, work that we did with Twitter. Um, that work, for those that remember, was uh, it highlighted, uh, among other things, the criticality of understanding uh, the importance of community to uh, buyer decision-making. Uh, today, we're excited to share, uh, call it the, first, the full complement of the research, um, specifically longitudinal learnings uh, or surveys done of over 100 B2B marketers and over 250 B2B buyers over three different points in time. So both are to include uh, June 2020, October 2020, and then April of this year. Uh, this work was jointly conducted uh, research effort aimed at getting underneath what drives B2B decision-making, um, how aligned marketers and sales were with what matters most uh, to buyers, and then importantly, how marketers responded and ultimately performed over the course of the pandemic. So, before we dive into some of the data, just, you know, I think at a, at a, at a fundamental level, we have three key messages uh, today that we'll, uh, we'll spend time on uh, that were sort of takeaways for us from the three surveys that we launched. First, it's harder than ever to be a B2B marketer. Uh, I'm sure this comment is met with a lot of head nodding amongst my marketing peers, uh, but we have some data that very much suggests uh, this is the case. Second, you know, in a few minutes, Johnny's gonna walk you through the longitudinal data that shows just how winning marketers navigated the COVID pandemic and achieved differential success uh, due in large part to decisions they made um, and uh, actions that they took. And then finally, uh, this blueprint for success offers lessons uh, for all of us to apply to our organizations and marketing practices going forward. And we'll, uh, we'll take a moment at the end to review some of those lessons and how you might apply them uh, going forward. So let's start at the beginning. Um, you know, like I just mentioned, B2B marketing is becoming increasingly challenging and this has everything to do with heightened expectations. So I know many of my clients uh, and Johnny would say the same that during the front end of the pandemic, uh, we heard that you know, sales leaders, almost all of which were virtual at the time, were asking themselves and their organization just, well, how is marketing contributing to growth, right? In many instances, these were questions that were either new uh, or hadn't been asked in a long time. And so we see some of that come through in the, in the data on this page, right? So first, we saw in the research that half of the marketers we surveyed 
had seen increases in their marketing targets since the beginning of COVID. These increases were across a variety of metrics, including marketing and sales pipeline, campaigns, events, and even social media. But perhaps what's more striking is that when we ask sales reps about marketing activities, over 90% of the reps highlighted the importance of both awareness and lead generation as marketing activities critical to hitting their sales targets. So expectations of marketers are rising from sales and marketing peers, but how do buyers think about it? Well, marketers face pressure from buyers too. Since the beginning of COVID, more than 90% of buyers report that they do their own research on potential future technology purchases before reaching out to sales rep, a sales rep. And 84% of them spend time actively comparing prices before reaching their decision to buy. So this is also uh, corroborated by other research we've done recently where we see that uh, by the time buyers engage with a rep, most buyers would consider themselves purchase ready. So not just sales ready. All that is to say, not only are sales and marketing teams holding marketing to an increasingly high expectation, but so is today's buyer. So with that consistently heightened set of expectation, obviously marketers are getting more resources within which to execute, right? Well, as you might have gathered, not exactly, right? Put simply, marketers face the pressure of higher expectations, but with fewer resources. So most firms reported that they reduced marketing budgets through COVID down as much as 6% in the first few months and down by 9% in late 2020 relative to pre-COVID levels. And while we have seen some of the funding come back to marketing teams, in general, budgets remain below their pre-COVID levels. So again, expectations higher than ever, and in most cases with declining resources at their disposal. With that as our foundation, now I'm gonna pass it off to Johnny, who's gonna describe what lessons were learned over the course of the pandemic and how winning marketers differentiated themselves. So off to you, Johnny. Thanks, Saber. As Saber mentioned up at the top, this was a longitudinal study conducted of both B2B marketers and buyers over the course of the pandemic. So three, three, three points in time. Um, we've affectionately named the time periods as taking the leap in June of 2020, right at the beginning, um, over the value, valley in October uh, of 2020, when I think it had settled in what, the, what quarantine was gonna feel like. Um, but you know, the outlook was still pretty bleak. And then on the ascent in April, 2021 of this year, where you know, vaccination rates were starting to increase and people could start to see a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. What we wanted to stare at over that time period was, you know, what are the differences between how some marketers perform versus others? And to do that, we defined a group of what we called winning marketers. Um, and, and those, we, we, we started with an outcome-based definition, which is those whose companies are growing market share and revenue, meaning they, they are winning in the marketplace. Um, and if you remember in last year's presentation, we spent a lot of time on the importance of community. One of the things that's also true about winning marketers is part of the reason they're so successful is because they do seem to understand their customers that much better. Um, one of the manifestations of that is, is the right-hand side of this page where winning marketers are just much better than other marketers at, at perceiving the importance of community that, that, that buyers feel uh, in, in, in their decision-making. So what we wanted to do is stare at those winning marketers versus other marketers over the course uh, you know, of, of the last 15 months and say, hey, what did they do differently? If, if you're one of those folks who kind of fast forwards to the end of the movie to see how it ends and see if you like it, um, what you see is the on the ascent picture, which frankly doesn't say a whole lot. <laughs> Um, when we ask winning marketers and other marketers in April, what are the things that you think of as being top priorities? They basically say the same things. They're both focused on driving brand awareness via digital, um, empathetic messaging around COVID and investing in virtual events. Well, this doesn't say a whole lot about what winning marketers did differently and frankly, whether or not that they were, they were successful over the course of the last 15 months. But what is different is how they acted um, at the beginning of COVID and, 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 and through COVID. So if I rewind the tapes back to the beginning, taking the leap, so this is June of 2020, other marketers and winning marketers are executing dramatically different playbooks. Winning marketers are much more likely to be at that moment in time, increasing their collaboration with sales, pursuing COVID related messaging, focusing on brand awareness via digital channels and launching campaigns targeting current customers. There was a 
you know, two reasons for this. One is we believe that they just had a better strategy in part because of a better customer listening function about what they wanted to do. And then another piece is that just about ability to execute quickly. They just were able to adapt much more rapidly uh, to the changing environment. What's really interesting is when you roll forward another, you know, four or five months into October and say, you know, did other marketers catch up? The answer is no. Um, first off, winning marketers said, hey, I executed a strategy. It's actually going quite well. I'm doubling down. And so you see even a greater percentage of winning marketers focusing on those three core activities. And you also see a widening gap between the winning marketers focus on those activities versus other marketers. Um, so winning marketers doubled down in the middle of the crisis. Other marketers still trying to figure out what to do. If I pull back up on the ascent, the story ends the same for both, right? They're, you know, both other marketers and winning marketers have essentially kind of caught up and are executing similar strategies today, but how they got there is quite different. Winning marketers reacted quickly out of the gate and were super focused in their strategies and doubled down in, you know, in, in the middle of the pandemic. Whereas other marketers took a much more scattershot approach at the beginning and then continued you know, to take quite a long time to kind of figure out the right strategy and the right focus, you know, taking almost the full kind of 12 months to align on how they wanted to, to react. Well, I think the natural outcome question is, is, is you know, did winning marketers actually win during the pandemic? Or are they only winners in a, in a, in a pre-crisis pre time period? The short answer is yes. You know, for winning marketers, all of those early moves with you know focused on the right priorities paid off. Um, if you measure uh, marketing outcomes either as brand awareness or quality lead generation, winning marketers outperformed other marketers throughout um, the, the time period we, we surveyed, and their lead actually increased quite a bit through the through the course of the past fifteen months. And so very much there's a, a strong correlation between what winning marketers were doing and the outcomes that they were achieving in the marketplace. We'll wrap up with some learnings and kind of what we can do going forward. But, but one last data page that I'll leave you with is if I step away from winning marketers versus other marketers and just say, you know, hey, obviously the, the, the pandemic had some pretty dramatic impacts on a lot of different industries and, and B2B marketing is, is no exception. Um, there, there's a set of things that marketers tend to agree in general, uh, you know, changes that were brought about by COVID that are here to stay. One of those is around just tighter alignment and better um, collaboration between marketing and sales. You know, 75% of marketers view changes around joint, joint pipeline reviews, coordination on, you know, account targeting, um, definition of a, of a lead as being permanent changes that they expect to continue going forward. The other big area is around just marketing priorities. 72% uh, expect permanent changes to things like, you know, brand awareness via digital, um, and then targeted campaigns of both existing and you know, specific new customers. I think the, the, the right-hand side of this is about, you know, marketers realizing that trends that were probably already in place are being accelerated by COVID and, and, and thus, you know, will continue to kind of you know, be a, a prominent factor in marketing priorities going forward. The last piece I'll say is, is, you know, this targeting around specific new customers is not something we have actually talked about in this, you know, in, in the data prior to this. And that's because it, you know, during a crisis, it didn't rise to being a number one priority for a lot of companies, but it, it certainly, I think, you know, went from, you know, far down the list to being much higher up on the list across most marketers. And that's why you see it placed here. I think for, for all of you marketers out there focused on ABM, I, th I think this would support that that's the right thing to be doing. <clears throat> Saber, back over to you to wrap this up. Great. Thanks, Johnny. Uh, so, you know, in, in, in summary, uh, marketers face extraordinarily high expectations uh, from buyers and within their own commercial teams. Um, we also discussed how winning marketers established a playbook uh, that drove success for them over the course of the pandemic. And as Johnny just highlighted, many of these themes are likely here to stay. So maybe to, to, to we, we thought the way to wrap up is let's review what, what we think are the four sort of key lessons learned from winning marketers uh, and the, and the uh, playbook that they uh, rolled out over the course of the COVID uh, crisis. So first is listen to your customers. 
right? So this is always the right message, uh, but winning marketers demonstrated just how important this is to get right. So take note of how well the best marketers listen to their buyer's community. Uh, they utilize empathetic and uh, COVID specific messaging and generally focused on what their customers were saying all to tune their actions, right? Customer voice was clearly the North Star uh, in winning marketers playbook. So that was sort of lesson number one. You know, number two, um, you know, agile, uh, or excuse me, uh, adjust and stay and stay agile. Um, bottom line is winners were clear on what they wanted to do and they were out, able to act quickly, right? So they just moved faster than everybody else. The data suggests it took them about a month to develop uh, and execute on a plan. They basically stuck with for 10 months, um, at which point everybody else caught up. The takeaway here for us is that, you know, to be competitive, marketers have to operate in a model that enables swift decision-making and frankly, rapid execution. You know, the third one is, uh, you know, playing the long game, right? So, you know, the winner's blueprint, I honestly, wasn't that complicated, right? They used customer data as the basis for a crisis blueprint that told them and everyone around them what they should do and, and when they should do it. You know, the clarity of this crisis blueprint not only pr uh, protected their budgets, but served to, allow, served to allow them to actually invest into the crisis. And as you saw with the winning marketers, lead quality growth and uh, the data just, uh, the, the data that Johnny just shared, they had growth in both awareness and lead quality. You know, in the end, these focus actions from the outset were the product of advanced planning, which allowed these firms and these marketers in, uh, that, that drove these actions to see beyond the immediate crisis. And as you saw with the winning, to see beyond the immediate crisis, excuse me, and instead view it as an opportunity to gain uh, on the competition. You know, the final one, basically staying aligned with sales, right? Finally, you know, winning marketers must be tightly aligned with their sales counterparts. I think that's a theme that you've heard uh, multiple times over the course of today, and frankly, even last year when we all uh, connected. Yeah, I mentioned early on that sales was looking at marketing with increased growth expectations, and that is a trend that's frankly here to stay. It's imperative that marketers align with sales on everything from accounts to target, uh, campaigns to run, uh, to metrics that we use to define success. Uh, metrics like sales growth, which we would argue is the ultimate and sort of integrated uh, measurement. You know, highest performing B2B marketers are deeply integrated with sales. Um, and it's imperative that all our uh, B2B marketing teams embrace this reality uh, and use it to reach the next level of performance. So those are the, fee, the, the four sort of key takeaways. And that's, you know, the, the data that we wanted to share with you all. I uh, wanna thank you for joining us today. Um, you know, I encourage you, uh, if you have any questions or have any follow-ups, I think we're on the next page, we've got a, uh, something you can scan and uh, that, that will reach out to us. Or frankly, feel free to reach out to us directly via the email addresses you see there. Um, best of luck to you all. Thank you again for your time and um, take care.